Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. This one is for you owners and particularly leaders out there. How to be a mentally strong, mentally fit leader. That is a crucial conversation in today's marketplace. Today, in the past, in the future, it's always an important conversation. But I have a guest for you today who is going to tell you exactly how to do that. And he is a speaker. He's an author. He has a book, The Mentally Strong Leader. And before we go any further, Scott Mounts, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me, Brandon. I'm ready to be harmonious with my knowledge to your audience and hopefully bring them uh, tips and advice that'll be of use to them in their everyday uh, work and professional life. I love it. I always love when the guests can weave that into the conversation. <laughs> uh, you get brownie points from me. I don't think yeah, I can right. do anything in life, but <laughs> <laughs> right me, on, right on. I like you that much more. But so let's unpack this a little bit because harmonious, it's actually a very important acronym. It's the 10 fundamental business disciplines that we implement into our clients' businesses. It's an operating model. The I in harmonious is inspiration, which for us, we talk about leadership because a true leader should inspire their team to come along and, and chase the mission with them. So we're talking about leadership today. It's a it's an area of business that is so crucial. The leader sets the tone for the organization. Good leaders can make an organization, organization bad leaders will break it undoubtedly. You help them become mentally strong, mentally fit. So how did you stumble upon this area of leadership? I'm curious. Yeah, you know, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start with a definition for your uh, listeners slash viewers, uh, Brandon, of, of mental strength. And then I'll kind of get to how I came across this. But, you know, mental strength, first and foremost, is it's the ability to regulate your emotions, your thoughts, and your behaviors productively, even in the face of adversity, no matter what the circumstances are. As I like to say, it's how you can manage internally so that you can lead externally. And here's the thing, Brandon, you know, most of your listeners are going to know that intuitively, if you want to be a success at work and in life, you have to be able to regulate your emotions and your thoughts and your behaviors. It's a basic function, but here's the news flash: It's really hard to do that. It is really hard to regulate your emotions and your thoughts and your behaviors. And if you could build the habits to do that, to build your mental strength, which I'll be getting into as we talk here, it turns out it's a way to train your brain for achievement. And I know that because I've been studying this for an awful long time. And, uh, you know, I had some, you know, decades of experience running uh, really big businesses, especially at Procter & Gamble. I had a chance to run some of their biggest multi-billion dollar businesses. And over the years, I started paying attention to what makes great leaders great? What makes achievers achieve, even in the face of daunting circumstances? And I really started to notice, notice this theme coming out of what I define as mental strength, that that was being the differentiating factor. So you were asking, well, you know, what led me to, to this point to study mental strength, to write this book? It was one piece of research I conducted in particular, Brandon, that really brought it into kind of kind of crystallize it, I guess, for me, which is I asked over 3,000 leaders, 3,000 executives, you know, combined with leaders. And I asked them one central question, thinking of the highest achieving organizations you've ever been a part of that overcame the most obstacles. What were the attributes of the key leaders in those assignments? And check this out, Brandon, over 91% of over 3,000 executives responded. It was a calm, in control, intentional leader, a leader with great mental strength. That, and they didn't know they were describing mental strength at the time, but they were describing leaders that flexed the six core mental muscles of mental strength, which are fortitude, confidence, boldness, decision-making, goal focus, the ability to stay focused on your goals, and even messaging positivity in your messaging, not getting pulled down into negativity by the troops around you and staying positive in your messaging as a leader. So 
I found that these six mental muscles kept appearing over and over and over again when people described the leaders that they work for in times that they overcame incredible adversity and achieved an incredible amount. And it led me to believe I have got to tell the world what I have learned. And I began studying it a long time ago and then started adding intense academic studies on into the mix because, you know, I'm an author and a teacher and I have to do this as part of what I do anyways. And it led me to believe, like, I, I can't wait to tell the world about what I've learned, which is what brought me to today to talking to you and to the book that's coming out May 7th titled The Man Strong Leader. That's incredible. We will definitely put the link to that book down in the show notes uh, below, wherever you're watching or listening. And um, that's, that's I feel your passion around it. It's so cool <laughs> that you've identified these, these six areas, these six mental muscles. Um, I'm just a little worried, you know, at 3000, did you think you, you interviewed enough people? Is that a comprehensive enough study? Do we have enough data there? <laughs> yes. Then we did it. What I didn't share with you is then we did it three more times. Oh, so okay. So 3000 wasn't enough. We had to blow it out of the water. Multiply that times four. And what was interesting is that, you know, the first time we conducted it was before the pandemic. And interestingly enough, Brandon, we've seen the percentage of people that responded and said, Hey, guess what? We think that the best leaders that we've seen achieve in adversity is this profile mental strength. That number kept ticking up until so now when we run it, it's on average 91 to be technically accurate, 91 to 92 percent of respondents will describe leaders that are flexing these core mental muscles of mental strength. And it makes sense when you think about it. If you just step in and think about it in times of adversity, what are the things that are the most important to bring to the table as a leader, and which ones require the most self-regulation. And if you think about it that way, you don't just have fortitude in and of itself on its own. You have to resist a lot of bad thoughts you're having and negative emotions you're feeling and bad behaviors that you see all around you. You have to engage that mental muscle to have resilience. Same with confidence. Same with a sense of boldness and risk-taking. Same with decision making and goal focus and the ability to stay positively focused in your messaging. So, um, yes, we we had to. Thanks for asking that question. We've verified it over and over and over again. And then I even got access to. Um, geez, we're getting close to two hundred thousand people that have taken my co course on LinkedIn Learning called Ten Habits of Mentally Strong People" that also inspired this book. So I keep getting this constant stream of feedback from people that I'm really onto something here. The concept that mental strength just may be, Brandon, the leadership superpower of our times. I really think it is. And I, I think it's, you know, leadership in, in all senses, leading a company, leading yourself. You, I mean, you don't see successful people having panic attacks, anxiety attacks, and being productive at the same time. You can't. I mean, you have to have these six muscles able to flex at a moment's notice. And they're all, it sounds like, intertwined in, in their own unique way. But I'm curious, as, as leaders in today's marketplace in particular... Um, you know, how do we, what's the starting place to go about building these yeah. muscles first, identifying where we're at with, the, with these <laughs> six, and then also starting to build them up. And we don't have time to unpack all of them on this episode. Go grab Scott's book if you want to really unpack it, but where do we begin is the real question. Yeah. Excellent question. And what I don't, first of all, I don't want anyone listening to feel intimidated because the opposite of mental strength is not mentally weak. We all have a baseline of mental strength to build from. You just have to know which muscles to build at which time, right? When you go to the gym to work out, Brandon, you don't go in thinking, I'm going to work on every muscle in my body today. And then you do that every day. Wednesday's back day, Thursday's leg day, Friday's arm day. You know, I don't know, whatever it is. So you can build your own customized mental strength training program with the book, The Mentally Strong Leader. And here's how. Chapter two is all about a mental strength self-assessment. You get a 50 question questionnaire that helps you kind of reflectively think about, you know, questions that will identify what your overall mental strength score is. Then you get a breakdown by mental muscle. So how do you score for fortitude? How do you score in your confidence muscle, boldness, goal focus, decision making, and your ability to stay positive in negative scenarios? And then it gives you specific tips. Okay, so if you scored this, think about doing this and using these tools in the book to help you to get there. So help number one is the mental strength self-assessment in the book that helps you to figure out what to do. And the, the other important part, I think, Brandon, that for folks to understand is the other help that you get is you have to be able to build the habits 
to become mentally stronger, or you're never actually going to make that improvement. And that's what the mentally strong leader is built on habits and habit building science. And, and especially three things in particular, there's over 50 plus tools in the mentally strong leader, and they're all built on habit building science. Number one, rule number one, if you want to change a habit in this case, if you want to build your fortitude muscle or your confidence muscle, for example, you need repetitions. That's how you build your muscles in real life. You need repetitions of lifting. In other words, you need systems and frameworks to help you get those repetitions. And that's what I've built into the Mentally Strong Leader. The over 50 plus tools, they help you build the habits because they're all designed as mini systems or mini self-regulation systems and frameworks that you can employ in your life to build that habit. Habit building science, point number one. Point number two, we can't build a habit in this case, building a mental muscle we're interested in, without knowing the first small step to take. In the book, I have a section titled Your First Small Step for every one of the 50 plus habits that you can build so that you know that first thing that you should do to get going on building that habit that you want to build. And then the third point of habit building science that's built in is, you know, what do you do in moments of weakness? So for example, Brandon, Maybe, you know, you're a generally a pretty confident guy and you feel like your confident muscle, that element of your mental strength is really overdeveloped and you're, you're doing great. But then you have a bad day at work. The boss says something that makes you feel like an idiot. A report that you put in wasn't well received. You didn't show up great in a meeting and your confidence starts to spiral. What do you do in those moments of weakness where your confidence, to follow through this example, starts to wean and, and melt away? You have to know what to do in those moments, what specific actions to take so that the habit you're trying to build doesn't unwind itself. So you're going to find in the book, again, systems and frameworks. What's that first small step to take? What do you do in moments of weakness to actually build the habits that will indeed make you mentally stronger across each of the six core mental muscles? Yeah, that's that's fantastic because that answers my whole question. Again, it's in the book. It's easy. What? Where are you and what steps do you take? Well, it's in the book, easy peasy. But I'm curious. So you you've interviewed over oh, well over ten thousand leaders, or you've surveyed over ten thousand leaders. Yeah. Have you talked to maybe some not so successful leaders? Because I'm curious what the what the opposite of these traits would be. What are people focusing on, and what are they what are they doing on a day to day basis that does not make them a successful leader? Yeah, I think what we see it's a very interesting inversion, Brandon. Is you know, in in uh, my research, I've also taken time to you know, everyone in the survey plot and in the interview plot we designed isn't just you know leaders of the year. We also get some that are struggling that are the bottom ten percent of an organization, and I think what you see is the inversion of all the core mental muscles and mental strength. It's why I truly believe mental strength is the leadership superpower of our day because it's such a chaotic work world with so many distractions all around us, where self-doubt and the opportunity to doubt yourself is around every corner as work gets more complex and we work in a, you know, uh, kind of a mixed hybrid world now. I see the opposite of mental muscles being put into play for leaders that aren't doing great. So for example, ones that don't show up with a sense of confidence, that aren't resilient in the face of setbacks and they, they wear down, especially in the face of change. They don't know how to lead change, and they think change is happening to them, not for them. We see that a lot in leaders that aren't doing well. We see the opposite of decision-making. We see indecisiveness. We see the opposite of goal focus, another key mental muscle. And we see people that are distracted and can't stay focused on their work and multitask and, and drive their organizations to multitask and consider multiple paths rather than narrowing things down. And we see the opposite of the positivity messaging muscle, people getting sucked into negativity, sucked into woe is me and into, you know, a bunch of other, you know, victim mentality like a situation. So, so interestingly enough, our research really did show us that the opposite of mentally strong in this case is sometimes leaders not doing so great because they're not, they haven't developed those six core mental muscles. Yeah. And it, does it matter how long they've been in the leadership position or is it just, you know, they, they focused on those things for whatever time period, and that's just where they are. Well, you know what it matters more on? Um, and maybe this will surprise you, Brendan. I don't know. It depends on the leader's relationship with two things. And I talk about this in the confidence building chapter of the mentally strong leader. It depends more on, get ready for this, 
the leader's relationship with doubt and their relationship with themselves. Here's what I mean. First of all, you know, those are big words when I say relationship with doubt, because that presumes that all leaders have a relationship with doubt. Well, guess what, Brandon? We do. Every single one of us, even across all the people I've interviewed and or surveyed or, or talked to personally, even amongst the ones that would say, I feel that I'm truly confident, for example. They don't say, though, that there's no doubt. The opposite of you know, confidence, rather, is not the absence of doubt. Doubt is always there. What's our relationship to it? How do we manage it? You know, Are we self-confident more often? Or do we go all the way to cave into a fear of failure? Or are we somewhere in the middle and our relationship with doubt is when it appears, we embrace it and we use it in a healthy way. And I also see, to your question, leaders that are more successful have learned how to manage their relationship with themselves, meaning how self-accepting are they of their status and their point in life? Are they self-accepting? And I even talk in the book about the self-acceptance scale, which starts from self-acceptance, self-love, self-belief. You're, you're, you don't believe you're a finished product. You believe in the baseline and where you stand today and that you can grow and learn from there. And then the self-acceptance scale shows there are degradations in confidence as you go. So you start, you know, self-accepting. Then you might start seeking approval, right? Forgetting you start to chase authenticity instead of approval. One more degradation of confidence. Then you might start comparing to others, forgetting that the only comparison that matters is to who you were yesterday and whether or not you're becoming a better version of yourself. Then there might be another degradation where you start to beat yourself up over and over again with negative talk. A further degradation of self-acceptance happens when you, you actually believe I'm not enough. And for anyone listening at home right now or in their car or whether they're working out, I want to say this to you right now, you are enough. And you don't have to take on everything by yourself. And the degradation can continue in our self-acceptance all the way out to imposter state, where we don't even accept the status that we've achieved. So, so the best leaders have found a way to manage and understand their relationship with themselves and their relationship with self-doubt and control and manage and, and regulate each one of those accordingly. And I have tools for how to do all of that in the mentally strong leader. Right? Does that make sense, Brandon? Is that a surprising Absolutely. answer to you? <laughs> it, it was, yeah. And I think the the thing about leadership that always gets me is, you know, we're not we're not really taught to be leaders uh, in school. In particular, we all go. Most of us go through the school system. You're taught to be an employee. That's and right. even when you get into business, you're, if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, you have to seek out leadership training. You have to seek out books like yours and people like you to become a good leader. So it's really not a conversation of, am I meant to be a leader or am I not? Am I a good leader or bad leader? It's where am I at in my leadership journey and what's the next step is really what I'm get, gathering from this conversation. Yes, I, I, I really think it is mental strength, you know, is all part of a journey that we have to take. And like I said before, Brendan, you know, the opposite of mentally strong is not mentally weak. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't take the mental strength self-assessment to find out you know, am I a weakling? It's not like the scale at the circus where, you know, you bang the strong man bell and see if you can get it all the way up. And if you don't get it up, you're weak. That's not the way it works with mental strength. We all have a baseline to build from. And as long as we understand that it's always a journey, because guess what? Even the mentally strongest leaders I've ever met, Brandon, guess what happens when you don't exercise your mental muscles? The same thing that happens when you don't exercise your physical muscles. You start to get flabby. Your leadership starts to wear down. Your fortitude, confidence, and boldness muscles start to weaken. Your decision-making ability, your ability to stay focused on your goals and stay positive in your messaging all begin to wane, and you start to get weak over time. So it's a just like taking care of your, your physical muscles in the real world is an ongoing journey, so it goes with taking care of your mental strength. I love it. It's such a beautiful analogy, and it holds true every single time. So for those people who are listening and they're like, you know what? I like it. I'm not 100% convinced. Uh, I believe you have a gift for them, which I put on the screen. Uh, it is a gift to your your ebook, your PDF. Can you talk a little bit about that for a minute? Yeah, I think you'll find this of, of service. If you go to what, what you see there, scottmuscom slash mentally strong gift, you could download a 60 page PDF that has the mental strength self-assessment built right into it. So if you don't want, even want to wait for the book to arrive, you can get going on taking that assessment to find out what's your overall mental strength score. 
What is your score by mental muscle for each one of the six that we've talked about? And then it also includes prompts in there, Brandon, for um, the, the readers to figure out how do I get the best out of this book? And it even has space in there for you to take notes. So it becomes like a complete journal. So you can create your customized mental th strength training program in conjunction with the book. So 60 page uh, PDF free. Let's see if I can get the pointing right here. Go over here. <laughs> if you go there to scottmouse.com, mentally strong gift, you can download that uh, for free. Yeah. If you're watching, it's on the screen, wherever you're watching or listening, the link is down below in the show notes, along with Scott's book. There's a link to that directly. Um, and you can check out his website for everything else he's up to. So uh, Scott, I appreciate you coming and sharing this with me. It's very, very crucial topic. Again, I can't, I can't stress that enough. The the number of leaders who we run into who, uh, you know, they're, they need to build that muscle a little more and there's tools and there's people out there who can help you. And this is obviously an expert in the area. So, um, I have one last question and it's a question for a question, if you will. So you see behind me, if you're watching, you can see it too. There is a giant upside down question mark and it's lit up. That's how important this question mark is because we believe that what if that, Powerful questions get you powerful answers. So the question for this conversation about being a mentally strong leader, what would you, what question would you give to a listener? Just one question that they can ponder on until the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch drops tomorrow. What, what should they be asking themselves about their particular place in leadership and the muscle that they have built so far? Will I choose to chase approval or authenticity? Mm, dropping bombs for questions on us, Scott. Thank you for that. That is a beautiful question. So for you listening, ask yourself that question. That is a beautiful question. Digest everything we talked about here today uh, and go take advantage of these resources and, and the copy of the book. I, I really, really suggest you become not a, not a better leader. You build that leadership muscle like we've been talking about so you can effectively lead and inspire your organization and build a harmonious business. That's what we're here about. So Scott, thank you for being an amazing guest. I really appreciate this conversation. Thanks so much for what you do at Harmonious, whether it's at lunch or dinner or breakfast uh, and glad to be here. Doesn't matter what time of day you're listening. It's always <laughs> harmonious. Thanks for listening, watching wherever you are. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a minute of this madness. Every single day we bring you an episode to help you grow your business, inspire your leadership, whatever it is. We're here to get you to the next level in your business and do it the harmonious way. We'll see you on tomorrow's episode.